Hello, this is YouTube 31 Pockets, and I'd like to welcome everybody back to my part number 9 of the John Deere 1032 Restoration and Modification Project video. So, today's episode we're going to build and fabricate a new belt cover along with some basic engine setup when we take a brand new engine out of the box and go over it and do a little bit of testing and make sure it's running properly. So, let's get going. We are going to be using a piece of sheet metal. I already started to make the bend in the top piece and now we're going to clean it up and get it ready so we can weld on it and make some more bends and, and cuts to make it so this will fit. Now the reason we're building this is to keep the slush and the snow and the icy weather off the belts along with safety so no one gets hurt by if a belt happens to let go and with the size of the horsepower of this engine it could cause injury so anyway that's what we're going to start on today so we are using our original belt cover to create part of a template to cut our new pieces of metal for our new belt cover We've just finished welding our new belt cover and now we're going to sand it and prep it and get it ready for paint. Here is our original belt cover and now I'll go over to our new one. As you can see it's a little bit different in height between the two. I used the old one as a template to create the same bottom setup as the original. Now I'll turn it over so we can see the inside. I had to weld it together in sections so we could have this contour in here to allow for our turret to move and turn. As you can see the older one is a little bit smaller for the same contour but with a new size and the height you can see the difference between the two. Now another part for our new belt cover is we had to allow for our auger brake to expand and contract. Now since we re-engineered our new auger brake it opens and closes a little bit larger now because it's been repositioned so I had to engineer a, a small section into the new belt cover to allow this brake to expand and contract inside here where as we can see the old one the area is a little bit smaller where it would open up and close. Now our next step for today is we're going to clean and put grease around this area here for our turret so we can send the snow with ease in the direction that we we choose to. Now we're going to start with trying to hook up our safeties this is our main wire coming from the coil which everything operates based on this one wire. We have all the system here, the on off switch, we have an oil alert coming out of this new engine and every single thing is all tied into this one wire. If we disconnect this one wire the engine loop for the electrical system is wide open. That means the engine is in the on, stuck in the on position when everything is disconnected. Now to shut the engine off using this wire we can just touch it and short it on the block anywhere and it'll shut the coil off and this will allow us to, to connect and hook up our safeties or at least test them. Now in this case we checked everything and we are having problems it looks like 
we have a lot of corrosion because this machine is vintage and old um, the, the safeties don't seem to be any longer working but the way to test them is this is how we're going to have to do it now on the original style Snow King Tecumseh engine we have the, we're going to test everything the same scenario we have one wire that comes in right here where my fingers at and if we unplug this wire like it is now this engine is wide open loose and will will start no matter what as long as the engine operates it'll start now if we want to shut it off with this wire disconnected we have to take it and touch it anywhere somewhere on the block and it'll stall the engine off out and make it so it's able to run so we're able to test things so that's how basically we start to set things up to, to test a new installation with um, anytime there's a mo modification. Now here we have our box that the engine came in and this is our owner manual for the PowerMax engine and the engine seems to be it runs really well but it seems to be running a little bit too fast so we're going to the section in our manual on not troubleshooting but our specifications and this is our specification sheet right here now there's a 6.5 a 13 HP and a 16 HP which that's what we have the 16 horsepower engine now it's power KW RPM speed max is 3600 RPM so we have a meter here this is called a syro meter which test you test your RPM speed with this on small engines that don't have a tachometer this is basically a tachometer that reads by pulsations that the engine gives off as the engine is rotating and uh, twirling uh, the, the crankshaft so the way it works is we expand this little loop out and this wire will come out the end and there's a dial on here and let me see if I can so anyways when this the way that this works is this little wire out on the end will vibrate and when it gets to its widest point in its fan that's when it's most accurate on this meter that's in front of me and then we can see what speed the engines rotating at or its RP uh, its revolutions per minute so we're gonna throw this on and test it all we have to do is touch the engine or even touch the handle on the deck and this thing will operate so that'll be our next step We can now see that our RPM speed is at 4,000, which is 400 RPM more than what it's supposed to be the way that this new engine came out of the box. So now I'm going to show you how we're going to adjust it to slow it down so um, we don't have a problem with it. Now in a scenario, if we leave it at this speed, it will cause the engine to wear out prematurely or even... Um, blow up so we don't want that to happen and um, so we're gonna make a simple adjustment to the engine to bring it back down to what the factory manufacturer specifications are so we'll show you how we're gonna do that next okay now looking inside in between the air filter and the muffler we have our linkage system for our governor it's right here now we're not gonna do anything other than bend a tab right here that my fingers on 
right now. We're going to bend it back just slightly to allow the tension on the governor spring to back off slightly when we open the throttle wide open. Now, one thing we never want to do is undo this one screw on the mechanical governor that comes up out of the engine block right here. This, if you don't understand how governors work, this will cause a major problem to undo it. And I'll show you a few more scenarios of these engines that have this mechanical type governor system. We're running out of time for this episode, so the continuation will be running into episode 10.